In April of 2017, I converted my garage into a home bike shop, which means it'll be two years old this spring. Today, I'll take you on a tour of the Hack Shack, give you a rundown on what's working, and what I might have done differently. Before we get into any of that, we're gonna do a small project to address this pile of shoes in the corner. Some of these belong to my wife and I, while others belong to our friends. Pinterest to the rescue. My wife was kind enough to give me a quick and easy solution that she found on Pinterest. Just cut up a bunch of PVC, paint it, and bam, you've got a shoe rack, right? As it turns out, you can only get 10 inch PVC at a plumbing distributor, and you need to buy a minimum of 20 feet. That means it's expensive, and I'm gonna have a lot of it left over. It's also challenging to cut straight with the kind of tools you would expect a normal homeowner to have. In the end, I made a little jig out of a ruler and a marker to draw a line around it, and use a circular saw to cut it as straight as possible. The precision eroded a bit with each piece, as I measure the next cut against an increasingly jagged end, but it was close enough for a shoe rack. After a day of hauling, measuring, cutting, cleaning, finishing, and painting a bunch of sewer pipe, I finally got to making something Pinteresty. These sheet metal screws ended up being perfect, and once all the pieces started coming together, I felt a little better about embarking on this project. Clearly I could have bought something for a lot less at Ikea, or just built something out of wood for like 10 bucks. But this. Archaeologists will find this thousands of years from now and wonder why someone went through so much trouble for a shoe rack. As for the rest of the crap corner, I tidied it up with some Helmator mounts. I also moved the ramp mount up to make way for a skateboard rack, which cost me $3 in the bathroom section of my local hardware store. And with that, the Hack Shack is just a little more functional, organized, and cool looking. I've done a lot of things here in the name of organization, like using containers for fasteners, miscellaneous bike parts, and even GoPro accessories. Organization is the art of finding a home for everything, but it's always a work in progress. I added this tool chest in the middle of the shop for extra storage, and in addition to helping me stay organized, it has become a great place to film things. I was happy to find that it came with a power strip featuring USB ports on the side, but they turned out to be hot garbage. Same goes for this cheap bench vise. Had I known that this would become the most used tool in my entire shop, I would have sprung for a better one. Sure, it clamps stuff down, just not with any degree of precision. As for this cheap bench grinder, I can't say that it's held me back in any way. Speaking of stuff on my workbench, a few of you have spotted this enormous brass nut. My dad acquired this thing probably 20 years ago while working in demolition. It weighs about 11 pounds or 5 kilograms, so I use that as an anvil or to hold things down. Otherwise, it just looks cool sitting there on my workbench. This workbench was one of the first things I built in this shop. And at some point, I added this cover to hide all the bike parts and extra toolboxes below it. Otherwise, this bench has served me well in its current state. I hope to see the day where the top is uniformly grody from end to end, but for now, it's a work in progress. My original additions, like the hex wrenches drilled into the front, have worked out well, and I'm not sure I would have built this workbench any differently.
As for the tool wall, well, it's worked out okay, but I won't be using pegboard in my next shop. It looks great from the start and makes it easy to organize your tools, but the little holes deteriorate over time. And should you choose to actually screw anything into it, there's not much material to get purchase on. Recently, I dedicated the left side of the tool wall for my YouTube plaques and sponsors. Underneath it, I have all my tool chargers ready to go, so I can always have fresh batteries in the hopper. But that's not the only charging station in the hack shack. Here, I can easily charge all my camera batteries, or just plug the camera right in. It's all powered by a big USB brick mounted under the desk. To the right in this tool bag, I keep all my action camera straps and mounts for quick access. Moving to the left is this storage area which I've covered with a curtain. And my secondary bike rack complete with a guest spot. Today I modified one of the hooks to accommodate a fat tire bike by straightening it out and making it protrude further from the wall. You may be skeptical about whether this is secure enough to hold a fat bike, but try getting it off and you'll quickly see that it's more than adequate. As we've embarked on more projects, the Hack Shack has accumulated some new tools. This heat gun sees a lot of use, and so does this cordless hot glue gun which I bought recently. It gets really hot, so the glue ends up being much stronger than other hot glue I've used. Surprisingly, I also use these scissors constantly for opening packages, cutting zip ties, and even brake hose. The little parrot beak shape ends up working well for just about everything. Something else I use all the time? This retractable extension cord. I will never have a workspace without one for as long as I live. Since the beginning of the channel, I've acquired an insane amount of stickers, and I've more or less contained them to the surface of this storage cabinet. This is the official sticker repository, and if you accumulate as many stickers as I do, you know how nice it is to have a default home for them. Inside the sticker repository are action cameras, water bottles, gloves, and other stuff. Moving to the left is a masterpiece, my garage door mural designed by Sketchy Trails. I originally found out about Christina through Brian, who commissioned her to paint this for me. Some of you might recognize this scene. Since then, I've hired Christina to make a variety of things for the channel, including the YouTube artwork, the Berm Creek shirt, the refresh of my logo, and of course this garage door mural, which is composed of individual panels. It was tricky to get this all to line up perfectly, but we actually got it right on our first shot. As for this bike rack, I was a little iffy about it holding up to the abuse of loading and unloading bikes, but to this day, it's going strong. I was also cautiously optimistic about the floor. This foam interlocking floor makes standing around for hours on end much more comfortable. It also helps with sound deadening. Through a year and a half of abuse, this floor has held up well physically, but cosmetically, not so much. It's stained with everything from sealant to construction adhesive. I could probably clean it up, but not without a toothbrush and a three-day weekend. Oddly enough, the spot that looks the best is where I spilled a bunch of brake oil a few months ago. Were I to build another shop, I would still consider using it again, but maybe throw down a drop cloth to protect it when working with nasty substances. So that's a full tour and update on the Hack Shack. If you want to watch the original build video, I've included it on the end screen. Also in the description are links to some of the things in my shop, right down to that huge charging brick. If you have any cool additions or features in your own shop, I want to hear about them below. I think there may come a day where I'll need to start over and convert an entirely new space into the set of Seth's Bike Hacks. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.